Hey, welcome once again, all you Sec Plus preppers. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every single day I ask you two questions to ponder and contemplate and help you with your studies. Let's go ahead and rock right to it. Question number one today, what I want to know from you is which of these are characteristics of diameter? I want you to pick five. It's a lot of them. So go ahead and click on pause because you're going to need to to read through all that. Choose the five right answers. Then when you're ready, click play again and we'll break it all down. All right, choice number one on the list is one of your correct answers. Diameter does provide for authentication, authorization, and accounting, more lovingly referred to as AAA. Um, he falls right into the same world as TechX Plus, as well as Radius, and then of course there's the third guy there who is Diameter, um, all of which are AAA servers or services. The next option is not correct. It says that he provides confidentiality, integrity, and availability services. Uh, no, that is not his specific function, although there's certainly you know, going to be things that are, you know, somehow tethered to that involved. That's not specifically what Diameter does. It does not provide for CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Next batter on the list says that he is positioned as a replacement for Radius, and this is absolutely true. Next answer choice says that it offers decreased security compared to Radius. Uh, this is actually the opposite. That's not the right answer. Um, it actually offers an increase in security, and uh, there's a variety of reasons for that, not the least of which is the fact that it offers the capacity to do things like TLS, which is one of the other answers, so that you can actually have uh, full packet encryption of the data that's going back and forth between the client who's being authenticated as well um, all the way to the actual diameter server. Next item on the list says it supports server-initiated messages. This is a yes, and this is a big deal, particularly in the day, this day of mobile computing and stuff that we do so much. The ability for the server to initiate a message to the client um, as it relates to the authentication and authorization related data is an important component of, of modern systems. And Radius didn't have that ability. Radius was something that was exclusively client initiated and the server could only respond. But with Diameter, you get the ability for it to be bi-directional. Um, either side can initiate a message. Next item on the list says that it is connectionless. That's not true. It's actually uh, TCP based or SCTP based. It does not use UDP. All right, the next answer is another one of the correct answer choices and that it supports client server capability negotiation. Now, what this means is that back in the days of Radius, or still, because we use Radius a lot now, so even today, uh, Radius nodes simply support what they support, but they don't talk about what they support. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. They, so it's either there or it's not. Whereas with Diameter, there's actually a capacity for a client and server to negotiate what attribute value pairs they actually have the ability to make use of. That can be very helpful to make sure that the settings are actually going to be actually understood, interpreted, and subsequently utilized uh, when the connection is being established. And then the last answer choice, which we kind of already said was actually correct, was that Diameter does support TLS negotiation. So you can actually create an encrypted channel of communication between the Diameter server and the client um, and then pass all your data through that. All right, here comes question number two. Uh, question number two is a fairly straightforward question, I hope. Which of the following are characteristics of the password authentication protocol, or PAP? Go ahead and click on pause if you need to, give those a read, and then when you're ready, click play and we can break it all down. Now, most of the books that you're gonna read are gonna, uh, that are you know, certification related books are gonna break this type of authentication down into either PAP, CHAP, MS CHAP, or then when they get frisky, they'll start talking about things like EAP. Um, so we have the password authentication protocol, the challenge authentication protocol, and the Microsoft CHAP authentication protocol, typically version two is what gets discussed. So in the first option right here, it says that PAP generates a random string and uses that as a challenge uh, during the authentication process. And that is not true. That's actually what the challenge authentication protocol does. Uh, the password authentication protocol does not do that. So that is not one of the correct answers that we're looking for here. The next option says that passwords are transmitted in plain text. And this is absolutely one of the characteristics of PAP. It's also one of the reasons why PAP is viewed upon so negatively. Uh, because people look at it and go, uh, why would we ever want to transmit passwords in plain text? Now, the best reason that I could give you for the existence of PAP is that everybody can do it. And there's a subtle distinction that's going on here with the password authentication protocol when contrasted with other protocols like CHAP or MSCHAP v2, is that with both CHAP and MSCHAP v2, the authentication mechanism endeavors to protect itself in some way, shape, or form. Okay. That's not to say that there's not 
other mechanisms of security wrapped around that. For instance, you could authenticate using CHAP, PAP, or MS CHAP through a TLS tunnel. In all three of those circumstances, the authentication would be, be protected, but not by the authentication mechanism itself. It would be protected by the TLS tunnel, which is in, sort of incidental to the authentication. Now, if you didn't have something like a TLS tunnel to pass your authentication traffic through, then CHAP and MSCHAP v2 try and protect themselves using different techniques. PAP does not do that. PAP transmits plain text passwords, and I don't want to say that it assumes that something else is going to protect it, it just doesn't bother with it, either assuming A, nobody else is going to be on the line to hear this, or B, um, that some other mechanism is going to somehow protect it. Okay? But it does not endeavor to protect itself. And that's sort of an important distinction and understanding about PAP. Third item on the list says that PAP is mandatory for all PPP connections. Not true. And then the last item on the list says that PAP can perform repeated authentications throughout the duration of the connection. Uh, not true. CHAP can do that and does do that, but uh, PAP does not. So the only correct answer here is that PAP transmits its passwords in plain text. All right, those two questions, done. Hope you enjoyed them. Hope they help you with your studies. Hope they help you on the exam. If you like them, click like. If you want to get these every single day, I will be most, most, most appreciative if you would subscribe to my channel. That would be very cool of you. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow. So I'll see you then.